Well, good evening, everybody. Um, welcome to today's webinar on creating CMAs using Cloud CMA. Uh, I just want to thank everybody for uh, coming by this uh, evening for our uh, next evening class here, <clears throat> hosted by our here at Rancho Southeast Association of Realtors. I'm your host, Anthony. Um, and we'll get started here in just a minute. We're just going to take a minute or two to see if anybody else chimes in. Uh, I will let you all know today that we are recording today's webinar. So um, if we do go over something too quickly, please feel free, number one, to ask a question. Be more than happy to answer it. Or if maybe we went over something and you and you missed out on it or you could have missed out on it, don't worry. Everybody attending today's webinar will get a copy emailed to them um, of the recorded webinar by this time tomorrow. So you have actually no worries today. So with that said, let's get started. So welcome to today's webinar on creating uh, CMAs using Cloud CMA. Now, real quickly, an introduction of who I am. My name is Anthony, and I've been working with the associations now for close to 18 years. Started off in the MLS department, uh, so I know guaranteed I'll speak to everybody attending today's webinar regarding rules, regulations, violations, things like that. What I'm also involved with here with Rancho Southeast Association of Realtors is our member outreach program. Now our member outreach program is designed to give you training on all your tools and products. So not only do I train on MLS, which is our big focus today on um, how to create CMAs, how to run searches, add and modify listings, things like that. But I also host webinars on teach on zip forms, how to put together your contracts electronically, how to digitally sign your contracts, things like that. And of course, I also train on technology. I love technology. And what I love to do is to be able to show you as an agent how to utilize your technology a little bit better to be able to make you a better agent. And usually what I mean is to try to make you a 21st century agent is to help you go paper less in your business. Now today what we're going to do is we're going to go over one of your bread and butter products of being able to sit down with a potential client to go over market realities um, and wanting them to or needing them to list their home. Okay. One of the things that we need to do is as real estate agents is educate potential sellers on what's happening in the market, what properties are actually being listed for, how fast they're getting into escrow, and of course, most importantly, what they're actually closing escrow for. Now, unfortunately, with these third-party websites that we have to deal with in today's technology, most of their information is off between 20 to 30%. Now, that could be a lot of money in a lot of cases, especially here in Orange County. A 20% gap, plus or minus, you're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars. Like as an example, if I went to that third-party website and it told me that estimated value for my home is about a million dollars plus or minus 20 percent that's a four hundred thousand dollar gap in my home's value now i don't know about you guys but do you want to play with your uh with a large differential like that with your with your largest asset this is where you as the real estate agent are going to be able to show market realities and that's going to be based on the mls data that you are going to pull when it comes to your comps. Now, one of the things that we're gonna to utilize today is Cloud CMA. Now, Cloud CMA is your free member benefit product that allows you to put together these gorgeous looking CMA reports to really showcase you as an agent, you know, above and beyond just showing uh, information, right? So what we're gonna be able to do is, is present this information in such a way to make us look even more professional. Now. To access Cloud CMA, you're going to be able to do this in one of two fashions. One, you're going to be logged into the MLS, and you can access Cloud CMA either from the home screen here and going under your external links widget on your home screen and clicking on Cloud CMA here, or you can move your mouse to the green tabs at the very top and click on the links tab. When we click on the links tab, this will now display all of your third party member benefits offered to you by. CRMLS. If we scroll down on this list of benefits, we're now going to come to the choice and click on where it says Cloud CMA. 
Now, when I click on Cloud CMA, if this is the first time going to Cloud CMA or your first time activating Cloud CMA, you're going to be asked or asked to activate your account. Now, this is where Cloud CMA gets a little trick, tricky. On their website or in their system, if you just say um, create an account, then Cloud CMA is going to want to charge you a fee for that account. What you want to look for on that screen is in very light, fine blue letters underneath where it says create an account, the choice that says activate my free account. Again, that's in little blue, light blue letters stating activate my free account. Okay. Now, when you activate your free account, when you click on that, what you're then going to do is uh, put in some information like your profile, but most of it should be filled in based on you accessing it from the MLS. There are two bits of information that you're going to need to input in. The first is your email address. The next will be a mobile cell phone number. Once you do that and you hit continue or activate, and one of the nice things that, about doing this free account is that you don't have to create a unique username or password. It's all accessed from the MLS. So once you activate that or activate that, you're then going to be sent an email to your email address. And then in that email will be a code that you're going to need to input into the link that's in the email for you to officially activate your free account. Okay. Now, once you do that and you go back into Cloud CMA, then the very first place that you're going to go is under your information. And that's going to be found over here towards the top right corner. You're going to see your initials. When you click on your initials, you're going to get a list of choices, one of which will say account settings. Now, there are going to be a couple of things that we're going to do first and foremost before we make CMAs. The first under our profile is upload our avatar or our profile picture. I like that how nowadays in the in the 21st century, it's no longer called a profile picture. It's now called an avatar. OK. Now. What we're going to now do is click on change avatar or change our profile picture, and now we're going to browse our computer for an updated photo of ourselves. Now, this photo is going to be put on your cover sheet as well as a contact screen or a contact report in your CMAs. So make sure it's an updated profile picture of yourself. OK. When you click on that picture, you might have to move the little circle around to get your face on in that circle. And now you're going to say confirm that that picture. Now, this is going to upload what your photo is going to look like. Now, some other nice things here under your account settings in your profile, you can make sure that everything is correct here. You can make sure that your company name is spelled correctly, upload your company logo, which is going to be really nice as well. So here we can actually upload a company logo. So we're going to click on that, browse my computer for my company logo, put that in my shot and confirm it. OK, now the next thing that we're going to modify in our account settings is our contact information. From here, we're probably going to see our our contact list of what current information we have. Maybe it'll display your DRE license number, but I know for sure it will display your company address. Now, maybe you have other information that you need people, these potential sellers, or potential clients to contact you at. Just above the contact list, there's a choice here that says add new contact. Underneath that, choose the method of information that you're about to add. So click on the down arrow and now say choose the necessary information like your cell number and put that in. Hit add. Now that adds it to your list. And maybe, oh, I don't know, I need to add in my email address here. And maybe I have a Facebook business page. Put in these values 
of how you need to be contacted. Okay. Most importantly, your DRE license number. Now, as you're adding in this information, you'll notice that down below under the contact list, it adds the information for, you know, in the order that you're inputting it in. Now, I know everybody attending today likes to be contacted a certain way, first, second, third, correct? So, what we can now do is change the order on how this information will be displayed on my reports. Now, how we switch the order around, very simply, we're going to hover over top of the information we want to move. We're going to click and hold with our mouse, and now we can drag it above or below in our list and then let go. So here, what I can now do is input or put in my information on how I like to be contacted first, second, third, so on and so forth. And by the way, feel free to add in everything that is uh, applicable to you, okay? Now, the last thing that we're going to modify, and one of the many things I like about Cloud CMA, are the custom pages section. There are certain reports that you as an agent can modify for your CMAs. If we click on custom pages, we now have several reports that we can now modify to our needs, like your agent resume. Come over to your agent resume, hit the pencil icon, and now we go into edit mode for the resume. Now these are templates. All we need to do is just click in the box, and now we can type in our information. Just like so. Just like so. Now, besides your agent resume, maybe if you're a seasoned agent, maybe you have clients that you've worked with. And of course, your clients are hopefully giving you online reviews on public websites like Zillow or Redfin or Realtor.com or wherever. Copy and paste those, those reviews. Or even better yet, maybe in some cases, not only do I have their written review, but I've had them do a video testimonial that I've uploaded to my YouTube channel. Put in the YouTube link into your client testimonial. You even have a report or a, uh, a report for your marketing action plan. Here's a standard template of what people generally do in order to list a property, right? What they do in the first week, second week, third week, and all so on and so forth. Click in this box and now take out the things you don't do or add in the things that you do. Hopefully you as an agent will add in more things than you take out, but at least you can do that. Anything that you change on these reports, come down below to the bottom and hit save. Whoops. Let's try that again. And maybe I'm zoomed in too much. There we go. Upload. Uh, I'll save my PDF. I think there is a save button on here somewhere. I think it might actually automatically save it now. There used to be a save button down below. Okay. All right. Once you modify these three sections in your account settings, now we're ready to create a CMA. Anybody have any questions on uh, activating Cloud CMA for your account? By the way, we are recording today's webinar, so if you're just now logging in and you might have missed some of the beginning moments, don't worry, you will get a copy of the entire webinar today, or not if not today, later, uh, early in the morning. No questions? Looks pretty simple. Good. All right. So now let's make a CMA. This all now begins back to the MLS. So MLS is our big gi giant data source in order to be able to pull up market realities. Now, before I actually start creating my searches, what happens if I've never been to the property before? How do I know what type of search to make for the property I've never been to? Well, we need to get some hard information about a home so that we can properly compare apples to apples, right? Unlike certain third-party websites, 
and one of the main reasons why their estimations are off so much is because they end up comparing not like models to each other. They tend to combine all properties in one given region with each other to come up with their estimations. So basically they end up comparing apples to bananas, to grapefruit, to oranges. And we don't need to, or we as agents don't do that, right? If we're gonna sit down with somebody and talk about what their home could possibly be worth if they were to list it through us, then we need to make sure that we give them accurate comps, okay? Now for us to be able to create or find accurate comps about a home, we're going to all start this at realist tax records. What we want is to see what has actually been recorded on title about the property, whether it's been listed or unlisted. So what we're gonna now do is look for four major key things about a property through its tax records, okay? So we're gonna click on realist tax, it's gonna open up and now we're gonna type in the subject property address. So here, realist tax records opens up. We have the address of the property that we're going to go to tomorrow. So I'm just gonna simply click on the address section and type in that property's address. When I do that, the property is gonna open up and I'm gonna look for four key things. The first thing that we're gonna look for here is who owns the property. So I'm gonna look through here and find out who owns the home, right? Why is it important to know who the homeowner is? Anybody know? You're right, it is. So I know who to talk to and the person that owns the home or the people that own a home are the legal people that are are the people that are legally allowed to sign the contracts, right? So if I happen to see that the property is vested in a trust or an LLC, as an example, I know right away, I've gotta do extra paperwork in my zip forms to make sure that the person signing for this trust is allowed to sign for that trust, okay? So we need to look at who owns the property make sure that we're actually talking to that homeowner when we go to meet them, and if they're allowed to sign for the home, okay? Fact number two that we're gonna look for, we're gonna look for the rooms. Specifically, we're gonna look at the bedrooms and any extra rooms that may be available, so the characteristics of the property, right? As an example, we might see that there are six total uh, rooms in the house, but this property is an officially, or is officially, according to its tax records, a, what is this, a, a two bath, and or I'm sorry, yeah, am I looking at the right bedrooms? Where is my bedroom count? It's usually right about baths. And, huh, that's funny. They didn't have it on here. Uh, typically I will see number, oh, here we go, bedrooms, duh. We see that on the tax records, it's got three bedrooms. Somehow along the way, somebody listed on the MLS that it was a fourth. We look at the extra rooms, maybe it indicates that there's a den or a loft or something like that. We see how many bathrooms, that's item number three that we look for. And then item number four, we're gonna look for square footage, okay? We wanna make sure that when we go and run our search in the MLS, that we're looking for in or around the appropriate square footage of the home, along with the number of bedrooms and bathrooms of the property, okay? At least those four major facts. Now, once we get those four major facts from realist tax records, we can now go back into the MLS and now create a proper search, okay? Now, technically, when we click on the, uh, go into the MLS, we can create a CMA from any type of search or any type of property type and any type of search under that property type. So we, generally, we're just gonna to go to detailed under residential. We're first gonna select our statuses, active, active under contract and pending. Active is important because we wanna be able to show what properties are currently actively being marketed in the area. We wanna select active under contract and pending because what we want to show are properties that are successfully in escrow and how fast properties got into escrow. 
And lastly, we're going to look for closed information because we want to show the homeowner what the properties or what properties or how much properties actually closed for. Now, when we select an inactive status like closed, next to that status, there is a date range box here. Now, right now, the date range box has number of days, 0 to 180 as a default, meaning I want to look for closed information that closed today up to 180 days ago, or basically six months. Now, in most cases, most agents don't like to go back that far, right? Usually, three months worth of information is usually good enough. Now, we can modify this. Just simply click on the box, and we can still do number of days. So we can just delete out that 180 and type in maybe 90 or 60. Oops. Wrong key. 60 or 3,456 days. Or we can actually put in a specific date range. Maybe we go, oh, I don't know, 01 slash 01 slash 2020 dash 04 slash 015 slash 2020. So we now do a, a specific date range. Or we take it out altogether. Now, if we take it out altogether, now we're telling the system we want to look for any closed properties that have closed today up to 18 years ago. Now, that may be too far for most of us, right? So. I usually generally like to put in number of days, 0 to 90. Now, at this point, we now need to locate the areas in order to pull up properties in or around the subject. Now, some agents at this point will do one of two things. One, they can jump over to the map. And from here, they're going to lo locate the property and then with their drawing tools, draw around the subject property. Or from the criteria section, they'll then put in the county, the city, the MLS area of that city, and of course, hopefully, maybe the subdivision of that city or of that area. Now, that's a lot of steps. Let me help you out save a few steps. And that's with this choice here in the middle. The choice here in the middle, underneath where it says map search, there's a choice here. And let me zoom in so you can see this a little bit better. There's a choice here that says within one mile and a white box here. This white box is basically where you're going to type in the subject property. Doesn't matter if the property is listed in the MLS or not. What you're telling the system to do with this choice right here is to draw a one mile circle around whatever the subject property address is. So we don't have to jump over to the map to make our circle. We do not have to put in that information here. All we're going to do is type in the box right next to that one, the subject property. So, because we're looking at Google Maps. So now I'm just going to put in the subject property's address. Gonzalez Street, there we go, in Cerritos. Now, if one mile is too big, then click on the down arrow and you can make the circle as small as a quarter mile or you can make it as big as 25 miles. Now, I know how it is sometimes, right? The pricing of this one neighborhood is different from the pricing of a different neighborhood literally across the street. Most of your time or most of the time, you're probably not going to draw a circle any bigger than a mile it will be usually smaller than that, okay? But for our demo purposes, demo purposes today, I'm gonna to leave it at one mile, okay? Now, if we look real quickly at our number of matches here, we see that we've got 55 properties that are active, active under contract, pending and sold for the past 90 days within one mile of the subject property. So how do I narrow that number down? Well, that's gonna be over here towards the far right. Now, we're not going to put in the price range, and the reason why we're not going to do that is price is all going to be dictated by what we choose for our comps. But we will put in some hard information from the subject property because, again, we want to pull apples to apples, not apples, oranges, bananas, and grapefruit. So we're going to start off with the bedrooms. 
Now, the reason why we looked at the bedroom count is that our bedroom on the property is three. But if we happen to notice that the property had a den or a loft, some agents in the MLS will actually add that room as a bedroom, right? As long as the property has an accessible egress window that you can open up and get out of in case of a fire, according to our MLS rules, we can consider that a bedroom. It does not need a closet. It does not need to have its own bathroom. As a matter of fact, the bathroom in the hallway is a bathroom for that bedroom. A portable closet like an amoir um, is great enough for a closet. So it doesn't have to have its own sectional closet or built-in closet in that room, okay? So MLS basically says as long as it's got an op uh, a window that you can open up and get out of in case of a fire, you can consider it a bedroom, but you got to indicate that in the property description, right? So in that case, looking at the bedroom count, I might actually do a range. So my minimum number of bedrooms will be what's on realist tax records. And then I'm going to consider that den or that loft in the home that some agents might consider an extra bedroom. I'm going to put that as well. So my bedroom range may be three to four. Three minimally on what's recorded on title and including that extra room that might be converted into a bedroom that agents are putting on their listings. Now the next uh, item that I'm going to put in is a living area square footage. Now this is where we want a plus or minus around the subject property, right? But we don't want something so grossly overestimated or grossly underestimated. So I would say your differential should be a plus or minus about 10%. So as an example, if I happen to notice that according to the tax records that the property was 1500 square feet, then maybe I do a plus or minus 1300 square feet to say 1800 square feet, okay? Now at this point, if I look at my number of matches just real quickly, we see we have 21 matches. Now ideally for you as an agent, what I would suggest the number of matches you want to shoot for are between 10 and 20, no greater than 30. Give yourself enough comps to look through, but not so many comps that that's what you would be doing all day long, okay? So I would say between 10 and 20, maybe even no greater than 30, the most, okay? Now, at this point, with your desired number of matches met, we are now going to immediately jump over to our results. And now we're going to start picking our comps. Now, just real quickly, some things that I want to note here in helping you select your properties quickly. And by the way, are there any questions so far on the criteria? I know it will vary depending on your situation, okay? But as a general rule of thumb, the statuses, location, and of course, the, the bedroom and square footage are typically your big four things that you're going to put in. You as an agent might need certain specific things that you need to put in for your search to pull up certain specific properties. Um, but just be careful because if you're putting in something so specific that you don't pull that many comps, that could be really frustrating, right? I've known that some agents have said, well, my property's got the view, so I need to look for properties that have, have a view as well. Well, think about that. Maybe if your property and the and other properties that are like yours that don't have a view, their dollar amounts are one thing, but yours may, may actually be worth more because of that view. So those are things that you wanna consider when you're thinking about your comps, okay? Or at least your search criteria. Are there any questions so far? Am I going too fast? Nope. Okay, Veronica. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Veronica. Okay, so what we're going to do right away, we pull up our comps, we get our list of one-line reports here. Now, the first couple of things I'm going to look for right away is distance. Now, because we did that within one mile of the subject property, we now get this extra column here of distance closest to. So what I would su suggest is making sure that you try to grab the closest to the subject, okay? The second thing that you're gonna look for right away is the subtype. Most importantly, attached 
or attached comparisons. I almost don't care about condo or single family only because that's all based around the land usage. What I really more care about is making sure I grab detached properties if this property is detached and not the attached ones. The third thing to think about is your status. Here, we've got all of our statuses, A-U-P-S. Ideally, what I would suggest without overwhelming somebody by choosing all the comps, try to grab at least three of each status. If you grab three active, three active under contract, three pending, and three sold, that should give you about 12 properties for your CMA. Now, active under contract and pending can almost be exactly the same, so take that one with a grain of salt, but at least in your rule of three, that's going to give you at least a fair amount of comps. Now, part of this rule of three is going to be considering the price. Try to grab at least one high, one low, and one medium priced property in your statuses. That way you kind of give yourself enough of a talking point and a price range without saying, well, here's one that's at $599 and here's the other one at $600 and here's the third one at $601, right? Give yourself somewhat of a gap to be able to look at the comps a little bit more. Obviously, you want to try to grab it within the same city. Um, and then, of course, just a, at a quick glance, bedroom, bathroom, square footage, okay? At least if you take a quick glance at those, you can quickly decide. But I always recommend always go into the listings themselves by clicking on the MLS number to make sure these are the properties you definitely want to use, okay? So just for demo purposes, we're just going to select some properties. I'm going to choose my active under contract and my pending. And of course, we're going to choose my three solds, just like so. Okay. Now, once I select my properties, I'm now going to come down below. And once I select the properties under actions, I get a whole list of menu choices that open up, one of which will be called Cloud CMA. So by clicking on this button here, I'm now going to I'm telling the system to export these selected properties into the Cloud CMA program. So when I click, now Cloud CMA opens up. And now I have an easy four step process to making my CMA. Step one, step two, step three, and then step four. Are there any questions on this so far? None? Well, you guys are making it pretty easy. All right, so step one under Cloud CMA, under criteria, name it. How do I know what to name the CMA? I'm going to name it the client's information, right? How did I get the client's information? I pulled it from tax records, right? So put in your client's name. Under the subject property, put in the property's address. Now you'll notice here that as I type in the property address, that it comes up automatically in a list of properties. Cloud CMA has now officially found this property on Google Maps, which now it should pull in some property data. Now, if it doesn't, not a problem. We're going to put in the specifics of the property, what was from tax. So maybe this was 1,500 square feet, three bedrooms, and two full baths. Now, what's nice about finding this property by its address is that you'll notice that there's another button here to upload a photo. Now this photo is for your cover sheet. Now if I've never been by, a, by the property yet, how can I have a photo that I've taken of the home for my cover sheet? Typically nine times out of 10, I won't. But what's nice about Cloud CMA is that because it found the property address here on Google Maps, what it will do for me, for my client CMA, is upload a Google satellite view of the property itself for my CMA. So if I don't add a photo here, I'm okay. What makes this better at this point than Matrix's CMA is that if you don't upload a photo to the Matrix CMA cover sheet, then on the cover sheet, it says in big giant bold letters, no photo added, CRMLS Matrix. 
Now, when we're talking about looking like professionals, if I handed somebody a report that immediately on the cover sheet of the report said, no photo added, CRMLS matrix, how professional does that make me look? Versus having some sort of photo of a home or of the property on my cover sheet. Which one would you decide? I think you would decide the one that's got at least a photo of the home. So again, it makes us look way more professional. Now, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna say, fetch our listings to jump to stage two to verify our listing content. So when we click on fetch the listings, we now get to see some information. Number one, in purple is the subject property and where all the other properties are in relation to the subject. Down below, we can make a suggested list price based on the comps that we selected. Now, nine times out of 10, until you actually get to the property, you probably won't put in a suggested list price. But at least looking at this, you get to see your low, your medium, your average, and your high price listing to at least get you mentally prepared with how to, you know, where you fall in in listing the home. Now, down below here are their comps that we selected. What's nice about this is it gives me one last look or one last chance to review what I selected. So in this case, if I selected a property like in Lakewood, that is $599, but yet everything else falls in order between six to seven fifty. If I decide, oh geez, you know what, I really don't want this extra comp, I could deselect it. And now all of a sudden all my numbers readjust, just like so. Okay. So this is a one last review of making sure I want to use these properties. Now, if I want to use everything here, now we just go to where it says customize the report. Now, this is where the real power of Cloud CMA come in. And it looks like they added a new theme to their reports. So right away, we are given by default, sorry, let's, uh, where's my defaults? Mm -hmm. By default, you have more than 37 pages for your CMA, and that's not including comps, okay? Also by default, your layout is the two-photo layout, meaning that you, each comp is its own individual page with two of its listing photos. Now, real quickly, looking at all 37 pages plus comps, that could be a lot of pages in a CMA, right? Now, most of you may not want to go through 37 pages in a, in, a, in a listing presentation. So what we can do is take things out. Now, how, how do I know what report I want to remove besides knowing its title? I can come over to the title name and when I click on it, it actually displays what that report will look like in my CMA. So now if I don't want that report, come over to the report and click on the minus sign. When I click on the minus sign, that removes it and puts it under my standard reports. In the future, if I want to add in reports, I can come back over to the standard and choose the appropriate column. Now I'll find the report and click on add the report or the plus sign to add it back in. So I can take out reports or add them back in. And maybe some of these reports like my company, my resume, and, and stuff like that, I haven't modified. So I take those out. Another thing that you can also do with this is change the order. So maybe you like to present a certain way of certain information, first, second, third. Well, we can move these reports around for our flow. Well, how we do that, come over to the report, get that four-way arrow on the report, click and hold, drag it above or below, and then let go to switch the order. So what we're doing here is we're taking out what we don't use, excuse me, and moving around to put in the order that we, of how we want to display information. Now, what we can do at this point is save this for future CMAs. And how we do that is with the templates. So after you've put, picked and chosen what you want taken out or added in, Come over to the template section at the top and choose save as a template. From there, name it. Now what I would suggest to, ag to agents is that you're gonna create at least two templates. One 
is going to be a brief CMA. So you take out most of these reports because you're going to have clients that just want the quick down and dirty and don't need a lot of showmanship in order to want to list their home. So do something that's super brief that you can go over information quickly. Save it as a template, call the template brief. Then maybe instead of 37 pages, add in maybe half of that. So maybe 17 pages. Now you're going to save that template as a medium CMA. Okay, and then lastly, one that you don't have to do is the all pages. So now the all pages will display all 37 pages for those clients that need the full on showmanship and full explanation of listing a home. Okay, for your full on presentation. That is up to you. Now, when it comes to your layouts, Click on the layout choice, and here you're given seven different layouts on how your comps are to be displayed. I personally like to show the four column layout only because I like my comps compared side by side. So the subject property compared to the comps to the right. And then of course, you've got your theme. Here, your color schemes, basically. Click on the down arrow, find the theme that you need or want to use to showcase your report. Now, some of you, attending today may actually work at certain companies that may actually have their own theme. Like if you're a first team agent, then literally what's nice about Cloud CMA is that first team, as an example, has their own theme report for their agents. Now you have to be an agent of first team in order to access this. Or maybe some of you in the room may be a Century 21 agent like Century 21 Award. If you're a member of that particular brokerage, then click on that theme, and now you're CMA for Century 21. If you're like me, where my company doesn't have a theme report, then now I'm gonna come down below to my colors and select what color I like. The modern blue, maybe the red and black, I don't know, let's come up with something fun. Um, let's go teal and burgundy. There we go. Now I'm gonna say choose that theme. And now it's making or applying that theme to my reports. I'm gonna make sure I have my template selected. And oh, I don't know, let's under my customs, grab my reports. And now I'm going to say publish my report. Now here's something that was added about a year ago when it comes to publishing your report. Cloud CMA now are, now Cloud CMA offers a chance for you as an agent to entertain an iBuyer offer within say five days. So even before you even listed the property, what you could do is submit your CMA to an iBuyer group one of which is a Zillow iBuyer, and they can come back to you and put in an all cash or put in a cash offer. I kind of funny, I kind of find it funny that they're saying cash offer when every offer to a seller is a potential cash offer, right? No matter what they get, or at the end of the day, once escrow closes, they get the cash. So you could do that, but for the most part, you want the client to list with you because you're gonna list it for the highest and best price or the most efficient price, depending on the market. So skip that, because most of your iBuyers out there are, are, are offering anywhere from 50 or 30 to 50% less than what the home is valued at. So a lot of these sellers going with iBuyers are really leaving a lot of money on the table. So be mindful of that. But this is where you shine as an agent. Hey, I promise you to get the most money for your home. So from here, we get to see that Dan, Dan Stan's report is made. So now we can click on view PDF and open it up. And this is what this PDF document looks like. Here's that teal and purple um, color scheme. There's the satellite view of the property for my cover sheet. Here's the property address, who we're preparing it for. Here's my profile information. We have the map of the comparables right here with a list of all the comparables that we selected. 
Down below, we've got our contact information report with my photo, my information, and what's been displayed. And now down below here, we're running into our columns. Now, I chose that four columns. So the, four, the column to the far left is the subject property. Now I've got my comps to the right, starting with closed first. Now, real quickly, just to show you what I like about these closed comps, is that here in the side-by-side -side comparison, we have list price versus sold price. So we see here that this property was listed at 698, and then funny enough, it closed for 698. But this property here listed for 738, but closed at 745, and 679 and closed at 700. So right away, I can show people, are people getting more or less than what they're listed for? So in this case, in my brief report by page, what is this, four or five, we're now having interesting conversations about strategy in listing that home. Maybe they stop us right there and there and say, look around my house and tell me what you think my home is valued at based on the comps and what my home has or doesn't have, right? square footage, bedroom, bathrooms, things like that, all the way down the list. Now that's just the PDF. Here I could print out the PDF, bring it with me at an appointment, or I can download it, email it to the client if I want to, but that's pretty much what the view PDF portion does. Are there any questions on creating the CMA or going over the PDF? Looks pretty simple. Oh, we got it. Yes, excellent. All right, one last thing that we're going to go over. Now, one of the things that I mentioned earlier uh, in the beginning is that what I like to do is show you how to utilize technology to become the 21st century agent. And what I, again, mean by that is to help you go paper less, right? Do you want to necessarily carry a big giant binder? with all these pages about a CMA and what you do and this, that, and the other? Probably not, right? A lot of times paper and books take up a lot of room. And a lot of t clients today, when they see that book come out and they see you starting to flip through actual pages of documents, they kind of glaze over by page three and they kind of shut down. And that's because they all of a sudden start to think, geez, this agent's a little old fashioned. This is an old way of just doing things, not saying that there's anything wrong with it, but let's help modernize you a little bit. I'm sure most everybody, and I'm gonna hold up my iPad here, might have their tablet device with them, or maybe you've got your laptop with you, okay? If your laptop or your tablet device has access to the internet, log into the MLS, go into Cloud CMA because you've created the CMA, now, instead of choosing View PDF, instead, choose this button over here called View Slideshow. What this does is it takes that PDF document and makes it into an easy, digestible, formatted presentation that you can utilize electronically. So even if my PDF document has 37, 48 pages to it, whatever, this will now condense this down into an easy, digestible format. And what, what I mean by that is this. I'm going to turn my laptop over to the client. I'm going to activate the view, view slideshow, and this is what they're going to see, or even on my iPad. So the slideshow is going to open up. Right away, we get to see the front end of the report. Now, because of the report that I chose, Usually on this report here would have the map right away of the subject property. But down below here to the bottom right corner, we'll notice that there's a left, right, up, down arrow that we can easily click on with our mouse or tap on the screen with our finger. Here's our contact information. Here's the map of the properties and the subject property. So the first thing that we're going to deal with is sold homes. Right away, we get to see the sold property. We get to see what it was sold for, when it's closed, property address. But now, all of a sudden, instead of a left or right arrow, we see a down arrow. Because one of the questions that seller is going to ask is, why did that home close at 698? Well, geez, 
I really wish I could show you that home, right? Well, guess what? We hit the down arrow and now we get to see the photos of the listing. One of the many reasons why we like not to remove the photos from a property because when it comes to comps, we want to be able to show in, in trying to get listings why the properties are getting what they're getting, right? We see here, well, geez, the home was staged, so the agent must have done some really good marketing. We see that the floors were modernized. We got granite countertops or quartz countertops. We got bright colors. And then, of course, we can look at all 75 photos, right? Oh, look, look at the garage. It's all nice and, you know, um, oh, what's that nice little concrete or little um, uh, paint that they put on the, in the garages nowadays and of course maybe hey they've got a fire pit in the backyard and it's got a nice little overhang and it's clean and the grass is cut right here we can see all 75 photos if the agent has 75 photos on the listing and we can do that for all the comps even if it, if the agent did really bad photos which i've seen right maybe the lighting is off here we get to see that some photos are actually bright yellow because of bad lighting. And here they're taking a picture of the laundry room, but nobody put away the laundry detergent, right? Or they didn't close that closet door and they didn't have a well-trimmed backyard or upkept or whatever. This is our way of being able to show this potential seller why these homes are listed or sold at what they sold for. Then after our sold, we go into our pending. And let me see here, we see pending, and we actually get to go down and tell them what pending means, just like we can do with what sold means. This is what sold means, right? We go right into our comps. And then again, the pictures of the properties that are impending. After the pending, We've got active, and again, the current listed photos of the active properties in the area. Now, after we're done with our comps, we've got a nice little average of comparisons. Here, I love this sold analysis because it gives you the sold properties, what it was listed at or what they were listed at, what they sold for, and of course, did they get above or below their asking price, and of course, days on market. So we get to see here that on average, people are getting 101% of what they're asking for, not too bad, and but they're selling it in 44 days. So if you're expecting me to sell the property in 10 days or less, you might not get that 101%, just so you know. And of course, we've got our other important information. Now, at the end of the day, once we're done with our last page, we've now got a thank you page and here's where we get to have a little fun. So under th at the end, we can now email this report to the client. Now what's nice about this is that they'll get the PDF document. So if I have 48 pages in that PDF, this was only what, maybe 10 or 20, between 10 and 20, at least here when I email them the PDF, they will get the full on PDF document. So even if you don't take out any of the reports to make your templates, do the view slideshow, and then at the end of the day, give them the full-on 48-plus uh, page uh, comps or PDF file at the end of the day. That is Cloud CMA. Does anybody have any questions about this? Oh, we do. Uh, can you download the slideshow? first and show without internet. Unfortunately, Raymond, no. The slideshow is embedded in Cloud CMA, so you can't download it. The only thing that you could download is the PDF document. So what I would do is download the PDF as a nice backup, just in case you have no internet whatsoever. And then are all the comps info part of the download, uh, of the slideshow when you download? Um, not all of them. Uh, it shows the pictures, it shows the closing price, and you saw saw here how you had the price comparisons. Um, 
but it does give all the stats there, like bedroom, bathroom, square footage, when it closed, um, how much it closed for. It just doesn't give it to you in that nice format in the PDF. So you've got some give and take because the slideshow is really meant for something quick, down and dirty, to make it look like you spent hours putting together a listing presentation. When in a matter of fact, it took us, what, five minutes to do. Does that make sense? Are there any other questions? Well, if there are no other questions, I want to thank everybody for attending today's webinar. I know we finished about five minutes early, but I hope you all enjoyed today. Um, if you have any questions, let me give you my information. My information is Tony, T O N Y, at ocar.org or ocrealtors.org or feel free to email me or call me at 949-586-6800 my extension is 104 or you can give our main office line a number which is or call which is 562-860-5656 uh, i hope everybody totally enjoyed today's webinar um, i enjoyed teaching you all today and I hope I, I showed people some new fun ways of being able to do a presentation and that you will try this out. Other than that, I hope you have a great and wonderful day. And again, everybody will get a copy of this. So, so, um, so yeah, again, thank you very, very much. Thank you, Tara. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you, Raymond. I'm glad that you all enjoyed it as well. Thank you, Veronica. So I hope everybody has a great and wonderful evening. Get out there. Get those properties. Promise yourself at least one listing a month, and I guarantee you, before you know it, you're going to be rocking and rolling in this business. Other than that, have a great and wonderful day, and I will talk to you next week. Bye.